Hi everyone, my name is Devastasia. I'm a board certified lactation consultant and I've been in the birth and lactation world for five years now. Today I wanted to talk about supply regulation and some lactation basics to kind of debunk some misunderstandings about what supply regulation really means. Now I see a lot of questions um, especially when I, I do the Sarah Wells bags, um, Instagram, ask an ABCLC questions. And a lot of them are on, you know, are along the lines of if my supply has regulated, can I drop a pump section or my supply is regulated? Is it okay if baby sleeps for the night and I don't pump or I don't nurse? And it's kind of a complicated answer. So I wanted to go through, you know, some lactation basics. How does lactation work? And hopefully that will clear up some of the misunderstandings around supply regulation. <clears throat> so we begin making milk around 16 to 24-ish weeks of pregnancy. So about halfway through, you might notice that your breasts begin leaking. Um, you might not notice that. It doesn't really affect your milk supply one way or the other, whether you notice leaking or you don't notice leaking. Now, it might not look like milk, but it is, it's called colostrum and it is kind of clear and golden in color and it's thick and sticky and, you know, not very milky, but it is the perfect amount for baby to learn how to eat. So if you think about pregnancy, babies don't have hunger. All of their needs are being met through the umbilical cord and they're learning how to swallow by swallowing amniotic fluid. They might be sucking on their thumbs or their, you know, their fingers or their toes. And, you know, these are all learning things, but baby has not felt hunger at this point and they don't need to eat, you know, for nutrition because everything's being taken care of through your body. Once they're born, however, they have to learn how to eat and that small amount of colostrum is just perfect for babies to learn. It's not an overwhelming amount and it's not, you know, a very fluid, um, you know, substance. It is that, you know, it's thicker and kind of sticky. So it's much easier for baby to learn how to eat. And that very small amount is perfect because baby's belly can only hold a tiny amount per feed. So those very small frequent feeds every couple of hours are really important those first few days. Now, around day three to day five is when that milk is going to transition. So it's going to start looking more like milk and it's going to be in a greater quantity. So that milk transition is generally what people call the milk coming in. A lot of lactation professionals don't like the term coming in for milk because your milk is already there. Colostrum is milk, even though it doesn't really look like it. But, you know, regardless of if you plan to nurse or pump or anything like that, that milk is going to transition. You are going to have that abundant amount of milk. So hand expression is a great thing to learn, um, especially if you don't plan on feeding baby that milk, just so that you can get more comfortable. So I do have a video on hand expression also, um, so that you can do it, you know, in a, an effective way. All right, so what causes this milk to transition? The milk transition or, you know, milk coming in is triggered by the expelling of the placenta. So once that placenta is born, your hormones start to shift. And that shift in hormones tells your body that baby is now on the outside, and so you need to feed baby that way. So that's when you'll see that very large amount of milk come in. So your body doesn't understand how many babies it's, it needs to feed whether you have one baby or you have three babies. So it's going to make a lot, a lot of milk. And the amount that you nurse or pump during the first two weeks is building those milk making structures in the breast. So long-term you can make enough milk. 
Now, if you are not nursing or pumping frequently, then you're going to build fewer of those milk making structures in the breast and in the long term have less milk. So it's really important to nurse both sides every couple of hours on cue whenever baby is hungry or if you're exclusively pumping to pump every time baby eats. And the average amount for a breastfed baby is one to one and a half ounces per hour. And so if you are exclusively pumping, you kind of want to aim for that amount. So it's 24 to 36 ounces total per 24 hours. And you know, if you are pumping about that much, you're exclusively pumping, then once your supply regulates, and that means it goes from being hormone driven to supply and demand driven, once it regulates, then it's going to regulate to the, you know, amount that you need. So supply regulation happens around six to 12 weeks postpartum. For some people, it happens a little bit earlier. For some people, it happens a little bit later. But somewhere in that ballpark is when your body's going to switch from that hormone-driven milk supply to a supply and demand-driven milk supply. So... If you've been nursing on cue both sides, then your body is going to regulate to how much milk baby needs. It's going to be just the perfect amount. But I, I hear a lot of parents freaking out once that, that supply regulation happens because they feel like their milk supply has dropped too much because they no longer feel very full between feeds. They're not getting engorged. They may not be leaking quite as much, but these are all good things. These are good signs. You don't want to always be feeling very full or feeling engorged or sore. Um, that can lead to clogged ducts and mastitis. That, that milk kind of hanging around there is not a good thing. Um, and if you have been pumping around the clock every couple hours when baby eats, then your supply should regulate to what you've been, you know, removing. It should regulate to a sustainable amount. Now, if you have only been pumping every five hours or so because you have that huge amount of milk in the beginning, then once that supply regulates, it could drop very much. And I have seen this happen. Um, parents can pump a ton of milk each pump session so it makes up for those skipped feeds in there but once their supply regulates it drops a lot and that tends to end their you know lactation journey early because they feel like they have no more milk their milk is just drying up so even in those early days when you have a lot of milk it is a good thing to keep removing it on a regular basis to maintain that milk supply. So the same goes for nursing. When you have a whole lot of milk in the beginning, it may be okay to nurse baby only on one side because they're, they're getting full from one side, but I always recommend offering the second breast just to tell your body that you need that much milk. So even if they nurse just for a couple of minutes on the second side, that is better than nothing. Um, you may also want to use like the Hakka or another um, kind of milk catcher or hand express or even pump on the other side because I have seen this happen that a parent gets used to nursing from one breast each feed and baby is growing very well in the early months while the milk is still hormone driven but once that milk supply regulates, baby starts losing weight, not, not losing weight, but gaining weight more slowly and maybe even falling off their growth curve because that milk supply has regulated to less than what baby actually needs. So if you're only nursing, if you're nursing every two hours, but only on one side, it's really as if you're going four hours between nursing sessions. And breast milk, actually contains 
this protein called the feedback inhibitor of, lo of lactation. So it's FIL, the fill factor, and the more breast milk you have in your breasts, the more fill factor there is. And this fill factor tells your body make less milk. So if you are going a long time to let your breasts fill up in between pump sessions or feedings, then you're actually telling your body that you need less milk instead of, you know, that you're just trying to pump more by waiting longer. That's not actually going to help at all. That might actually be a hindrance and it could be a detriment to your milk supply. So you really want to keep removing milk as much as you can and empty your breast makes milk faster than a fuller breast. So I hope that that makes some sense. Um, once your supply has regulated, that doesn't mean that it's going to stay stable necessarily, that you can then drop a pump session and have your milk supply stay the same. Now, everyone is different. This might work for some people. Um, it depends on where you are in your lactation journey, but Generally, you want to be removing milk as you know when baby is eating, or if you're exclusively pumping, then you want to stick to a schedule where you're not going longer than a five to six hour stretch. And generally, a lot of parents like to have that five to six hour stretch at night, you know, to get some sleep. And that's totally normal. Um, that's actually what is considered sleeping through the night for a baby is sleeping a five to six hour stretch. So that is normal and natural. And what you should aim for, for being your longest stretch going without removing milk per 24 hours. So that's, you know, you can maintain your milk supply otherwise by continuing to remove milk around the clock. Besides that, that one longer stretch. So what about for an older baby? After baby is well-established eating solids, their intake of breast milk from the breast tends to decrease a little bit, um, maybe around 10-ish percent. Um, and that's, you know, that's totally normal. And nursing an older baby. So after a year or so, if you need to stop pumping at work because that's, you know, how your job is acting, or even if you're just over it, which is totally understandable, um, you can choose to stop pumping at work and continue nursing when you're home with baby. That is totally doable. And there are some emerging theories that after a year when you're nursing a toddler breast milk may not be made as like uh continually between feeds but instead being made as baby is nursing which i think is a really cool theory and i'm excited to see where that goes if you know we get some more science behind it um or any kind of proof how it happen happens um but the idea that there is another stage of lactation is, you know, it's pretty exciting. But personal experience shows us that, you know, nursing a, a toddler, nursing an older baby is much different than nursing a newborn or an infant less than 12 months. Because it is just different. You can go very long periods without removing milk for a toddler without feeling full or engorged in between. Unless you have like a major oversupply that you're still dealing with. Um, but in the general, generally in the course of lactation, you can go down to nursing a handful of times a day and through the night for a toddler and still not remove milk at all during the day. And be totally fine and continue making milk as long as you're removing milk. And this is also an option for people with infants. If they 
are choosing to mostly formula feed and just nurse a couple times a day, that's amazing too. You know, every bit of breast milk counts and you have options. Like it doesn't have to be all or nothing. So I hope this was really helpful. If you know someone who is pregnant or planning to breastfeed or questioning breastfeeding, then, you know, this can be a really helpful video to send to them just to get a kind of base understanding of how things work. And, um, you know, if you like this video, I'd appreciate if you hit the like or subscribe button. And remember, your worth is not measured in ounces. You are an amazing parent, and I hope that you have a great day. Thanks very much. Bye.